Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, today we're gonna make this uh, this funky little cube thing that we've got going here. Um, so if you've been on my channel before, you may, you may have uh, noticed that uh, I made something just like this uh, previously, uh, about four or five years ago, actually. Um, but the thing was, I I made that in oh god, what was it? Blender like 2.79. It was before uh, EB. It was before geometry nodes and before they updated the UI and. But so today I just wanted to kind of remake that tutorial by using some of the the more modern stuff that we've got now just to kind of keep it updated. Uh, so yeah, let's see here. So what we've got here is we've got this this uh, shape here, right? And let's let's flip back over here. Basically, what we've got is like this shape has got these uh, this pattern on it. You can see where we've kind of got bigger holes, and they end up kind of progressively getting down into this finer and finer mesh. And what that actually is is it's a proximity-based thing. So you can see the closer uh, any part of this mesh is, uh, closer it is to this uh, sphere, that's when the uh, the stuff gets smaller. And in fact, it's actually. Um, Still fully procedural. So if we move, if we move our uh, uh, sphere around, you can see we update the whole thing. Um, the one thing I did do is I turned off subdivisions there because that step is kind of slow. Um, so you can see the frame rate kind of dies if you're trying to interact with that in real time. Uh, but yeah, so it's just going to be a handful of um, modifiers that we apply. Uh, including one with geometry nodes, but it's pretty light. So, uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's start a new thing here and uh, try and recreate that. All right, so we got the blank scene, and uh, as is tradition, I'm going to select everything and delete it, and then I'm going to add that cube back in. Cool, and then I'm going to move it up uh, so it's sitting on the ground, uh, just because I think it looks nicer. All right, cool. So. Um, first thing we're going to do, I guess, is we're going to add a, uh, we're going to add an icosphere because we're going to need that. So I told you this was kind of like a proximity thing. So this is going to be very important to, uh, to get this around. So I'm just going to kind of put this over here in the corner and we're going to turn it off and we'll get back to it. All right. So with our cube selected over here is our, uh, is our panels. I want to go to the modifiers. So that's a little wrench. So we're going to, the, the crux of this thing is based on this vertex weight proximity. And basically that's going to let us, um, for all of the points on our, on our, uh, our cube here, we're going to find out how close each one of those is to uh, our target object. And then we're going to assign a vertex weight to it. So uh, before we can really get into any of that, uh, I need to flip into edit mode by hitting tab. And I'm going to hit F3 to bring up the search menu, and I'm going to say subdivide. And that'll subdivide it once, but I want to do it more. So if you notice, <clears throat> this little panel pops up, and that lets you change some of the options here. So by default, it just lets only lets you scroll up to 10, but I want to do more. I don't know. Let's see here. Yeah, let's see 30. That looks about all right. So that just means we have a whole lot more points, which means we have a whole lot more spaces to store some data for these, these vertex things. Um, so other than that, uh, the vertex group, we need to select one, but we don't have one. Uh, so if we go over here to this tab, object data properties, the little triangle thing, we can make a new vertex group. And we can say, I mean, we can rename it to something like my uh, vertex data. Yeah, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. But what is important is that we do need to assign all of the vertices to it because by default it doesn't associate them. So with everything selected, and if you don't have everything selected, you hit A on the keyboard and I'll select all your points. We're going to say assign and tap out of edit mode. So now if we go over and look at this in, uh, sorry, uh, control tab to bring up the... Uh, the mode wheel and we're going to go and look at it in weight paint because that's the mode that'll show us those vertex weights right so if we want to see what that looks like we uh, we come up here to weight paint all right so now we can see what our weights are and it basically uh, 
you may have seen this for doing bones and stuff, but if you paint, you can paint how uh, strong things are. Like blue is no weight and red is 100% weight. So I don't want to actually paint that weight in. Instead, I'm going to come to my modifier tab and I'm going to have this vertex weight proximity modifier do it for me. So I'm going to say what group it is. There's only one, so that's easy. And then my target object, I'm going to say it's the icosphere. And then lastly, we got this proximity mode. So I'm going to switch that over to, say, geometry. And now you can see we actually have something happening. So if I turn on the, uh, the icosphere, you can see what's going on is that any points that are near a vertex, so there's like a vertex here and here around these blue lobes, that's where we're, uh, we're starting to actually get some data. So we can also do this against edges or faces. Um, honestly, any one of them will work. It just depends on what you're going for. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this on faces for now. Okay, cool. So now we've got some data, you know, and that's it. it it's just data. So now we need to actually do something with it. So I'm gonna hit control tab and go back over to object mode. Um, and I'm gonna shrink down this modifier cause we're gonna add a few and just try to keep it out of the way. All right, so the next one is decimate, you know, which just sounds so dramatic. Uh, we're gonna decimate this cube. All right. Uh, so before we move forward, I'm going to hit Z on the keyboard, uh, and move over to wireframe. So that way we can actually see our, uh, see the geometry of this thing. So like you expect, we have all these, all of our original faces and there's a bunch of them, right? Uh, the decimate modifier here lets you use, uh, slide the ratio around and it will slowly start to get rid of them. In fact, you can go all the way down. And you'll you'll be left with just a single triangle. Um, so, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna turn that down to I don't know something like uh, about there that about that level of density. I think it's 0 0.05, 0 0.06, something like that. And this is cool, but you know, as we look at this, it's it's the whole thing. Everything's kind of uniformly uh, reduced. But and this is the magic part. We've got this vertex group option here. And we can say, use my vertex data. And now it's going to use the weights on each of those points to determine how much it collapses, or at least help uh, influence it. So it's not super dramatic yet, but you, you can just kind of faintly see that there's an area here that's kind of forming like a circle. Uh, that's, that's where it's reducing it to not, not quite as much. Uh, so... That's cool, but we want to kind of amplify that. And that's what this uh, factor here is for. It'll change how much of the vertex uh, weights get used here. So I'm going to just knock this up to, uh, let's say, about halfway up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I can see that I don't have quite enough uh, data in here. So I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to hit subdivide one more time. Yeah, now we've got now we've got something. Yeah, that will work. Cool. So you can you can see we've got all of, all of our lines in here, and it's starting to give us what we need here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the triangulate uh, function because that'll it'll be a little bit handier later. So so yeah, that that's looking good. You know, you can really see our specific uh, area where we've got the the changes, right? But so here's the next thing. Uh, right now, all this stuff is uh, triangles. You know, there's a triangle here, triangle there. And I don't really like the way that looks. I kind of want to get over into that, uh, I don't know, almost like Voronoi uh, sort of look. Um, so what that is, is that's called dual mesh. If you take a, uh, a triangle thing, it'll turn it into like those hexagonal things. And in my previous video, the way I did that was I used the tissue modifier, or sorry, the tissue add-on. But we've got geometry nodes now, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make a little geometry nodes uh, set up to uh, take care of that. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna say add modifier, and we're gonna say geometry nodes, and we're gonna say new. And if you're not familiar with geometry nodes, uh, you might not think anything happened, and it didn't. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to go look at the setup for this thing, which is kind of hiding. So if we split our view right here by going up here to the corner and dragging over. We can split our viewport 
and then in this top left corner of the, the new one, we can say well, we want to look at the geometry node editor. Okay, so now the data that's inside this modifier is coming from this graph. So this is kind of like the shaders and that sort of thing. So really all we got to do is add one node here. So I'm going to hit Shift-A to add something and then hit search. And like I said, we're looking for dual mesh. I'm just going to drop that in there. And that means it'll take our geometry input, apply a dual mesh operation to it, and then just spit it out to the output. And you can see that gets us like uh, this kind of Voronoi, you know, a polygonal sort of thing. Uh, so if I mute it, you can see what it looks like before and after. Uh, so I just think that look, that's kind of a cooler look. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's all we're doing geometry nodes. So that's cool. Uh, but if we if we move into solid view, you can see that we, we can't really see the, uh, the the details of it. It's just that's all in the uh, the wires. So what we want to do is add a a wireframe modifier, and that uh, that lets us actually start seeing some geometry from our our cool pattern, right? Um, but I don't uh, I don't like how big the uh, the holes are or rather how thin the wires are around the big holes. It's like, it's the same everywhere. So what I'd like to do is kind of get this stuff uh, heavier, but then it kind of messes with the, the thin details there. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the uh, this relative checkbox, which it's hard to tell right now, but if I turn the thickness way up, uh, let's dial that back down just a little bit. Something like that. You can see that we've got thicker, thicker wires over here, and then as we get into our fine details, uh, it gets to be quite a bit thinner. Um, so, in my previous video, I mentioned that there was a way to control the how thin the thin parts are and how thick the thick parts are, because I didn't really like the uh, using this relative checkbox. Unfortunately, uh, we can't really use that if we're going to use the geometry nodes. Um, so take it for what it's worth. It's not too bad. Okay. So then the last thing is the, uh, our forms here are very polygonal, which might be cool if that's what you're going for, but I want to smooth that out. So I'm going to add another modifier called subdivision surface. And that one takes a second to, to load on there, but you can see it kind of rounds everything out. Uh, and if we turn the levels up in the viewport, it'll get quite a bit nicer. So yeah, um, that's that's the uh, the technique. I call this uh, proximity decimation. Uh, I like the way it looks. It's kind of fun. Um, and yeah, so that that's the uh, that's the whole technique. But I did want to share uh, just one extra thing, just because I think the the space is cool. Is want to want to look at it with a a light in the middle. So I'm just gonna add a uh, a plane here, and I'm just gonna scale this up. I'm gonna edit this and extrude a uh, an edge up here, and basically I'm just building a, a little room real quick. So I'm gonna bevel the wall to make a nice, nice little spot. Right click and hit Shade Smooth, and then I'm gonna add a a point light. So you can see the point lights kind of hanging out inside the box there. So now if we Hold Z and go up to rendered mode. We can see we got our light in there and it's casting some shadows, but uh, I need to make it brighter. So I've got the point light selected and I'm going over to the uh, the light or the object data properties for the light. And on the power, I'm, I'm going to turn this up to something like a thousand. So it's quite a bit bigger, but our, our shadows are kind of muddy. And that's because our light source is a quarter of a meter uh, in radius, which makes makes our light source like a sphere that's like half a meter across, which, you know, that's like a foot and a half across. That's a big light. So I'm going to turn that down to, say, something like 0.01, something like that. And you can see that makes that makes it a pinprick of a light. It gives us uh, sharper shadows. Um, and this is kind of fun. So if we move our light around, you can see we 
can kind of have some fun with the, uh, the, the shadows. It's just kind of cool looking. Uh, oh yeah, we'll turn the, the world, uh, strength, uh, light source down so it's not so strong. Uh, and if we really wanted to make this look a little bit nicer, uh, we'll change this light color over. I'll do just like a little, little bit of a blue sort of thing here. Then I'm going to add one more light. Uh, make this an area light. Move that up. Kind of scale it up here. Ah, let's rotate it like this. Yeah, so now we've got a light source up there, but it's also not very bright. So I'm going to bump that up to, say, 100. And we'll turn off that. And there you have it. There is our proximity decimated cube. Uh, it's 3D printable, which is nice. I've done that. Uh, kind of think it's a cool look. Uh, yeah, that's 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 all I've got to say. So I'll talk to you guys later.